Hi, Tracy here, also known as Mercy Tierra, with another episode of Find Your Mojo. Each episode will give you a prompt or a challenge to get your creative juices flowing and get you scrapping and documenting your memories. This time, the prompt is to use a soft color palette. So let's get started. I am going to be scrapbooking this picture of my daughter and her friend going ice skating. And uh, when I saw the Stampin' Up! designer series paper called Falling in Love, here it is right here, I was, I immediately fell in love with it. It's aptly named. Uh, I really loved the softness of it and I loved the photorealistic elements in the bokeh and hearts and just all of the pretty, pretty delicate elements in it. What I'm doing here is I am taking some uh, watercolor pencils. Some of those are actually Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils and some of them are by Prima. And I'm, I'm just kind of putting some pigment onto a piece of plastic there it's a plastic palette and then I just wet my paper with a lot of water that is watercolor paper in 12 by 12 and I am just adding some color to that square of wet watercolor paper so I just wet a square in the center and now I'm taking some of that pigment that I made with the colored pencil pigment just scraping it on just like that and then I add some water to make it it creates like a paint so it's a little bit of a different way to use watercolored pencils I know that oftentimes we will color right onto our paper with the pencil and then add water uh, but I'm using it more like a paint here and I like that because I was looking for a very, very soft look. I didn't want any pencil marks and I didn't want to have to worry about blending anything out. I wanted it blended before it even went on the paper. And so now I'm just using my heat tool to dry that. And it's watercolor paper, so it can take quite a lot of water. If I was using cardstock, I would have uh, preferred to use a coat of gesso over it just to allow it to, to hold up to such a watery uh, technique here. And now I felt like I just needed a little bit more pigment on there. I did want a nice soft subtle effect but I, I did want to be able to see it so I just added a little bit more of those two colors. Now the uh, the watercolor pencils that you see me using there are, I think all of the ones that I end up using are from Stampin' Up! This is just a gray. So I had used a couple of different shades of pink and now I'm using a gray. And uh, it is from their, their very old watercolor pencil set. And so I think that they're now making a new watercolor pencil set. So uh, you might not be able to find the exact colors that I use, but it doesn't, I'm using them in such a soft uh, palette that it really doesn't really matter as long as you get some color on that background. It doesn't matter if they're an exact same pink as what's in the paper. And then I just used that gray and uh, added some pigment to my little plastic thing and I splattered. You saw me splattering it onto the background and now I had this idea because I have these lace doilies also from Stampin' Up! and I thought they might look nice if I could get like a like a gray wash over them but that doesn't end up working out very well and I'll show you that uh, in a few minutes. I always like to just kind of play around with the supplies that I have and because so many doilies come in a package I just thought I'd give it a try to see if it would hold the pigment, but it really doesn't. It's made out of a smooth, uh, shiny, not shiny, but a smooth paper that just doesn't absorb that particular pigment. So now I am matting this photo in the plain part of this pattern paper. It ends up I could have matted it with uh, Sahara sand cardstock, which I did have on hand uh, because I used the non-pattern part of that paper. Um, but anyhow, it doesn't really matter. And then I am matting it again in black and I just, I put, I cut it a little unevenly. So I just took it off and, and reassembled it there. And now I'm further matting it. So this is triple matted at this point with Blushing Bride cardstock. And uh, all of the cardstock that I'm using and all of the pattern paper is from Stampin' Up! except the watercolor paper I think is Strathmore. Uh, which I used on my background. Now I'm taking another piece of that same paper that I used to mat the photo. This is Blushing Bride and I am just trying to use the scrap up here and I think I, it might make a pretty good layer. So I have the, pet, the Falling Petals embossing folder 
And I'm just going to run that through my Big Shot. And that's going to give me a really pretty, very subtle pattern. And it looks like it's called Falling Petals, but the petals look like hearts. And so it's really, really pretty. And it gives, it gives the eye a nice resting point because it is not a colorful pattern. It's just a, a texture of pattern. And so that just it kind of gives your eye a bit of a place to rest because I'm going to be combining a whole lot of very pretty patterns. And this layer will just, uh, I guess provide a little bit of contrast from all of those busy patterns and a bit of a resting point. So you see the way that I make my layers is usually just randomly cutting pieces of paper, randomly or not so randomly. So here I came back to that uh, doily that was wet from trying to get it colored gray with a watercolor. And uh, I really like it all crumpled up like that. So I decided while it was wet to crumple it up and then uncrumple it and then I'm gonna let it dry and I'm going to use it right here. And I think it looks really, really pretty crumpled up like that and then straightened out. So I have cut just a couple of random chunks and I just hold my, my photo up to the papers and just randomly cut out some rectangles and then I can always trim them down if I need to. Now what I'm using right now is the So Detailed, I think it's called So Detailed, yeah So Detailed Thin Lits Dyes. And now these are very detailed, <laughs> thus the name, uh, dyes and I do not have that precision base um, cutting mat and so I have to use a lot of shims in order to get this to work so I have a single large piece of paper that's a shim and then I have two other smaller shims that you see me uh, using on there and that really cuts it out really really beautifully uh, if I didn't use all of those shims it it wouldn't cut the center part and so I just make a note to myself that three shims are needed for the large floral dye that's in that package and then I just stick the shims right in the package and I always have that big blue shim with my cutting mats because I often need to use that and so uh, that's just a tip for you if you know that a certain die needs some shims just stick the shims in with the die and that way you always have it and you never forget and you don't waste any paper by accidentally cutting it without the shims. So I did cut three of those. You only saw me cut one, but I did cut three. And I cut three with the idea I was planning to use two. And then I thought I better cut a third one while all my supplies are out. Just because sometimes we like to use three of something. So, so I just cut an extra one to have on hand. But I'm pretty sure I'm only going to use the two at this point anyhow. So now I'm thinking that uh, this watercolor paper would look really nice if the whole layout was matted on a nice neutral but but delicate uh, background. And so this paper that has the sparkly little branches on it is going to be a beautiful, beautiful frame for this page. So I am just going to cut a quarter of an inch off of all four sides of this watercolor paper. And I'm doing that because the watercolor design that I put in the center is, was nicely centered. So if it wasn't, I would have cut a half an inch off of two adjacent sides and that would have saved me a little bit of work but uh, because it wasn't, I did it that way. Now here's a tip for using watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is so thick and beautiful and fibrous that you can really, t really accentuate the uh, soft nature of watercolor paper by distressing the edges. So I have a Tim Holtz distressing tool here that just has a bunch of little blades in a circle and I'm just rubbing it and getting a really nice soft distressed torn look on the edge of my watercolor paper and now because that paper is so beautiful I didn't want to waste it by using it as a mat like the whole piece of paper as a mat so I just cut out a big chunk from the center of it and I might use that on another page in fact I know that I do use it on another page because I've already used it when I'm narrating this one now I'm taking my white jelly roll ink, uh, my that is my white jelly roll pen by Sakura, and this is my favorite white gel pen, and you can barely see it on this, and, and I actually kind of like it like that. It, it gives you a nice, soft, subtle outline look. I am double outlining all of the layers that I'm using on this page. I'm not going to outline the textured embossed paper, 
but I am going to outline these two layers here. And that just brings my papers together and gives them a nice finished look. And it's just one more pretty little detail for these layers. And when you're layering something really, really delicate, it's all in the details. And so now I'm just lining these up so that I have the right amounts of them sticking out. And these dies are just so beautiful. They give this beautiful, delicate, intricate look. I just absolutely love those two die cuts on this page. They really make this page. And then to either even further emphasize the delicate nature, that extra um, doily just looks so pretty. Now the paper clip that I'm using is also from Stampin' Up. It's called, uh, it's from a mini paper clips combo pack. And now I'm playing around with an idea here of using twine. I want, I feel like I'd like to add something bold to this page and the black twine I thought would do it, but no, it's not, it's not really going to work in this case. So I'm not going to do that. I'm also opening up another pack of Stampin' Up! embellishments. These are called Sending Love embellishments and they're really pretty detailed wood veneer shapes and they're so pretty, I love them. And so now I'm sorry, it looks like there's a fingerprint on my phone camera here, so I'm sorry that this is a little hazy, but I wanted to share my process of sewing. A question that I get asked really frequently is, is there a certain technique or skill that I need to know about sewing on my layouts? And the answer is no, you sew on your layouts exactly the same way that you would sew on fabric. I don't use a special needle or anything. The thing to keep in mind though is that your needle will become dull very quickly if you're sewing on paper. And so if you also sew on fabric, you'll probably want to change your needle before you go back to sewing on fabric. Fabric. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you sew through glue or any kind of adhesive, it can really damage your sewing machine or gunk it up and then it'll need to be cleaned. It's not, I don't think it's irreparably damaged, but you will need to service your machine more frequently if you sew through adhesive. Now, I just have a small sewing machine here that's dedicated to to scrapbooking and so I don't really care I just sew right through it and if if it means that my sewing machine won't last as long that's that's okay it's an inexpensive one anyways and I can always go and get it serviced in theory I'm not really good at <laughs> doing that kind of a thing but in theory I could go get it fixed when it gets gunked up um Anyhow, if you do have a high-end sewing machine that you use for sewing fabric, you'll want to make sure that you don't sew through adhesive. And that's my only tip, really. Um, now I'm just going to trim off all of my little strings that are left so that it's neat and tidy. Sometimes I like to leave my strings hanging, but in this particular layout, there's a lot of delicate things going on, and I really don't need pieces of thread to be competing. So now I have this third piece and it occurred to me that maybe I could use that third piece after all and uh, have a little, a little bit of embellishment in either corner. And I really like that. And I'm thinking that that bigger chunk at the top might hold some journaling or it might hold my title or it might hold some extra embellishments or something. And then the smaller piece in the bottom will probably just be as it is without any extra embellishing on it. Now for my title, I'm pulling out an old die set. These are called, it happens to be by Stampin' Up! as well. It is called the Timeless Type Alphabet Junior Sizzlets. And uh, these are these foam-based smaller dies. They're, they're thicker than a wafer-thin die, but thinner than the steel rule dies. I really like these because it really is a timeless, <laughs> it really is a timeless font. Stampin' Up! has a way of, of aptly naming their products, I think. So I'm taking some more Sahara sand uh, cardstock and I'm just cutting down some pieces so that they'll fit through my die cutter. And I'm adding a shim and one thing that I realized, and I'm just going back and forth twice, and one thing that I realized was that when I cut 
three at a time, it really doesn't cut very well. But if I cut two at a time, two of those plates at a time, it cuts better. So I cut multiples, I cut enough to have three of each of my letters. And I just didn't I cut out that process because it's so repetitive. And once you see how I do it, it's pretty um, self explanatory. So I'm using a fine tip glue pen also by Stampin' Up and I am just gluing those letters together like I did in my last Find Your Mojo video. And I'm really uh, trying to use my die cut letters, like my, my letter dies more often. And so I did that with all of them. I layered them together and then I, t I added a top coat of, of glossy accents. And so one easier way to add glossy accents to your pieces is to use some temporary adhesive to hold them onto your scrap paper and then they don't move around and you don't have to worry about where you're going to hold onto it. You can just fill the whole thing in with glossy accents like I'm doing with the rest of these letters here. And then glossy accents does take a fair bit of time to dry. So I am going to put all of these letters aside. The reason I'm using glossy accents is to give my letters a different texture than the rest of the items on my page and also the glossy accents will deepen the color just ever so slightly than if I had used the plain cardstock and I probably will be layering these letters on top of some pattern paper that has the same color so I do want them to pop out a little bit more. Now I went to my stash and got some chipboard pieces including this one that says roller rink. It says little ladies roller rink but this is not a roller rink it's an ice rink so I'm going to change this. I'm just taking a a set of letter stamps from my stash these are from the scraptastic kit club and I am going to cut out this word ice and stick it right over top of roller I wanted to choose a similar letter letter stamp to the but not exactly the same like I didn't need it to be an exact match I'm not trying to make it look like this always said ice rink I'm making it look like on purpose like I changed it um, kind of like a makeshift or DIY type of type of look to this embellishment. So there we go. It says little ladies ice rink now and I think that looks really cute and it looks it looks customized which is nice. Now I'm just going to outline that tiny little banner that I cut and this embellishment is ready to go onto my page. So there it is. It'll go right about there. And now I need another embellishment. I'm going to use my roller date stamp, just my plain office supply store uh, roller date stamp. I just had to go back to my computer to check the date on that. And it was February 26th, 2017. I'm using stays on ink and I'm stamping this right onto a piece of vellum that I had just pulled out from my stash. And I'm cutting a long strip I'm cutting it very narrow and remember that clip that I put on the photo I'm just going to stick that under the clip right there. I like to have my clips have a reason so I always try to add something under my clip. And uh, now it's much much easier to make fishtail banners when you don't have the item already attached to your layout so that's a little tip for you try to do that before you attach it instead of the way that I did and now this is another uh, chipboard piece from um, I can't remember which collection that is from it could be from Maggie Holmes from Crate Paper. I think that's where the ice rink one is too, or the roller rink. And now these butterfly bows, they're kind of, they look a little bit like bows, but they're shaped like butterflies and they're beautiful, glitzy, filled with sequins. They are from Pink Paisley and I love them. I am in love with those butterflies. And uh, so I'm very happy to use that beautiful smoky gray one on this page. I think it is the pop of contrast that I was really looking for it, that I mentioned earlier on this on this process video that I wanted to add some contrast with the twine. I think that this butterfly really adds the contrast I was looking for. Just snapped a picture of the way things are laid out so that I can remember because now it's time to start gluing things down this is one of my favorite parts of making a layout because the decisions have already been made for the most part and now everything just gets to kind of start to come together and it's where the magic really does happen I love this part of the process so I'm cutting off 
the little tabs, I guess, that, that go on that die cut. And then I'm taking that same glue pen, the fine tip glue pen from Stampin' Up. I love that glue pen. The glue in it is much more liquidy than I thought it was going to be. This is my first time using it is for this page today. Uh, and it's much more liquidy and that actually makes it easy to use because you don't have to squeeze a whole lot to get it to come out. It just kind of flows very nicely and you can really control it well. So I'm putting a little bit on each corner a little bit of that die cut piece I mean on each corner a bigger piece in the top because as I said something is going to go there I don't quite know what yet and so this uh little ladies roller rink die cut or I guess it's a chipboard piece not a die cut is going to go right there I'm just using a stampin dimensional piece underneath of the word rink just to hold it up because it's layered over all those layers of mats on the photo right and I really like that heart underneath of it so I just stuck the edges of the heart under the the under the chipboard now I'm going to use the same glue pen to and it's kind of like a bottle it's called a glue pen but it's kind of like a bottle like one of those fine liner bottles it has a needle that goes into the tip so that it, it won't clog, which is excellent. And so this little die cut piece, it's not a die cut piece, I keep calling it that. This little piece of chipboard says, fall in love with as many things as possible. And this is really relevant because my daughter has fallen in love with ice skating this year. We go ice skating every year and she's usually a very reluctant ice skater, but I think she realized that the, that the ice rink is a really social place and that it's a really great way to spend time with your friends. And whenever she goes, there's always new people there who she didn't necessarily um, decide to go with them, but she'll just go and they happen to be there. And, and she's been socializing more with a bunch of different kids because of it and just really loving the social aspect of ice skating. So I'm using the same glue pen here to glue down various heart wood veneer pieces from that set. That's the Sending Love embellishment set from Stampin' Up. And I'm going to make these hearts kind of cascade I guess around the photo and over kind of to the to the right of the photo and now the words are dry like the glossy accents on the words are dry and the title of this one is going to be on the ice and so I you'll see me here play around with and I left this part in my I never cut out important parts of my process because I want you guys to see how it's not always clear where your title belongs and where it's going to look nice and so I am playing around with a whole bunch of different options of where this title can go and that's one of the nice things about die cut letters is that they're not sticky so you can just move them around all over the place and just play around with placement as much as you want until you find a place where it lives now the E I had to redo the E with another coat of glossy accents and so that's why the E is missing as I play around with it I'm just letting it dry a little bit longer so don't worry I don't I don't forget the E <laughs> I'll add it eventually so this is where it's going to end up living right here and then I'll stick that little heart to fill the space before the eye in ice and put a couple of more hearts, I guess one more heart up there to continue the hearts around the title. So I don't usually use a soft color palette. So this layout has been really fun for me to design. And I think for me, the challenge was finding a way to have a little bit of impact on this page. And I think that that butterfly, the really bold, I mean, it's only, it's relatively bold. It's, not, it's still just a, a soft gray, but it is very, it catches your attention because of the glittery, sparkly nature of those tiny little sequins. And uh, I think that that is a exactly what I needed to uh, make this page work for me. I went to my typewriter and typed out my journaling on little strips. It says the SMB rink is Liv's new favorite place to hang out. She ditches us as soon as she gets there. And uh, that pretty much tells the story in very few journaling strips. And I like to have my journaling be fairly short and to the point and still tell the whole story. And so 
I, uh, I like the subtext of that is that, you know, she's too cool to hang out with her parents now. I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive to glue these letters onto my page. This is my favorite adhesive for gluing paper to non-paper, even though in this case I am gluing paper to paper. And those are, again, three layers thick, those letters. They're three layers of letters stuck together and then glossy accents on the top. And it does give a little bit of boldness, just a tiny bit. It's a little bit deeper than the Sahara sand uh, color that's in that background paper that that title is actually overlapping upon. And so what I really like about this that is really different for me, if you happen to follow my work, is that this title is very subtle. It's very tone on tone. It's not quite as legible as most of my titles are. I usually like to have a very bold title. I often use black foam letter stickers for my titles. But this, I wanted this, this page to really stand out as being different from all of the pages around it in my album. And I think that, that the fact that this title blends in actually makes it stand out. So there's a little bit of a paradox for you. <laughs> um, I really love how this is turning out. I'm going to add some staples to the edge of these journaling strips just to make them look like they're attached somehow, even though I actually glued them on. I thought that my stapler was empty, but it actually wasn't. This is an American Crafts little small stapler. I have a whole bunch of staplers. I love adding staples to my projects and this one I like because it has gold and there is that kind of warm element in the wood veneers on this page and so I thought that the gold staples would kind of pick up on that warm yellowy look that the wood veneers have. Speaking of the warm yellowy look of those wood veneers I did have to attach the whole bunch of layers to my background paper so I was ready to do that and that's what I just did. Uh, I need to add a couple more of those wood veneers up in this corner here just to continue the motif. I like that repetition and it does pull a page together. So I'm going to use more of the Tombow Mono Malta. I'm kind of using the Tombow and the Stampin' Up Glue pen pretty uh, interchangeably on this project. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. They're both good glues to use and I just had them both on hand. Uh, so now speaking of that warm wood veneer, this is Smo Smooch Pearlized Accent Inks. And the color is Moonlight, and this is an older product and uh, that I just had in my stash. And it is a, it looks like it, a, a nail polish bottle, um, but the the applicator is actually quite a bit more firm than a nail polish brush. So it is quite firm and stiff, and you, you can just use that applicator to smooth or paint on the ink. And it gives a really nice pearlized white accent to embellishments and so I'm using it here just to tone down the yellow tones on that wood grain on that wood veneer I'm sorry and so you see how what that does is it just makes these wood veneer pieces blend in a little bit better with the tones that are already on the page and they are still warm like the warm the warmth of the wood does still show through because it's not an opaque ink it is only semi-opaque semi and so uh, it just tones it down a little bit the yellow and orangey look to the wood and I really love what this does to wood veneer <laughs> in fact I'm so glad that I have this and that I just dis discovered it today because uh, I plan to use this on wood veneer in the future because it's just so pretty absolutely love it so that just takes those wood veneer pieces and blends them in a little bit more. The other thing I did was I sprinkled some, some white and clear sequins and they're iridescent white and clear sequins in two different sizes. I just sprinkled them all over my page and just let them land wherever they landed. And now I'm taking that little glue pen by Stampin' Up and I am, this is a perfect use of that glue pen. In fact, I prefer this glue pen over the Tombow Mono Multi for using with sequins because you get so much better uh, control, I guess is what I'm, was the word I'm looking for. Now I had a package of these tiny little 
pearls in my stash and I do not use pearls very often these days but when I first started scrapbooking I did and so I just put the little pearls in the centers of all of the sequins I'm really really pleased to have that supply on hand so I just wanted to give you a opportunity to see this page up close and see the little details like the watercolor on that background and the little splashes of gray watercolor off to the sides and the sequins and that textured paper from the embossing folder and those beautiful, beautiful detailed dyes. Oh my gosh, I love those. So although I don't often use such a such a soft color palette, I really enjoyed working with all of these really pretty, beautiful details. And I enjoyed it so much that I actually went on in the same session and just made another page. <laughs> so I thought I would show you the other page. I used really similar products. And I just wanted to point out that you can use a soft and delicate color palette and lots of pretty details, feminine details, even if your topic isn't necessarily something really frilly or pretty. You know, my my daughter is quite a tomboy and <laughs> and uh, the photo is not all that delicate. She's wearing a hockey helmet. But the memory is something that I'll ch that I will cherish, and I think that some of the elements, like the bokeh effect on the paper and the sequins, and the frosty look that I added to the wood veneers, I and the sparkliness of the butterfly even gives it a bit of an icy feel that kind of fits with the ice rink. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you've lost your mojo this month, try scrapbooking using a really soft, delicate color palette. Even if it's not your usual, like me, uh, you might find that it just helps get your creative juices flowing, and you might even find that you scrapbook more than one page like I did that day, which is very unusual for me. So you guys take care and have a really great scrappy month.